Hi there. All right. We're going to talk about the pharmacokinetics of lidocaine. Woo woo. Um, I'm sure you've probably all heard of Novocaine. Uh, Novocaine is the brand name for lidocaine. Um, lidocaine is a local anesthetic. It also works uh, as an antiarrhythmic for only ventricular arrhythmias. Um, but it can be used both locally as an anesthetic as well as systemically as an antiarrhythmic. And lidocaine is pretty interesting. Um, it's cleared pretty quickly. Its total body clearance, as you can see here, is about 10 mL per kilogram per minute. It actually can be much faster than that. If your patient has CHF or cirrhosis of the liver, the clearance is decreased. Um, and I'm going to skip down to here, which I should have put up earlier. The fraction excreted unchanged in the urine is 0 0.05. So only about 5% of it ends up in the urine, which means it's 95% cleared by the liver. I think of it as really totally cleared by the liver. And if you remember back to last year, we used lidocaine as a prototype for a high extraction drug. So it's a high E drug cleared by the liver. So remember all the stuff that goes with high E. First pass effect, it's clear, clearance is pretty much dependent upon blood flow. So that makes sense, doesn't it? Then if your patient has CHF, that you're going to have a decrease in their, clear, their uh, total body clearance or their clearance. And a cirrhotic liver, of course, would decrease your enzyme activity. It also makes the liver so hard that blood flow can't go through it. So it acts almost like a decrease in blood flow as well. Okay? <clears throat> so these are all important. And they're so important that really the blood flow is what really determines the clearance. So lidocaine clearance will, will change depending upon the New York Heart Association classification that your patient has. So if it's a one or lower, you can see actually this is a low guess. It really is more like 14 um, mils per kilogram per minute. And that's really what I think you should use rather than the 10. It's a little more accurate, I think. If you get into a class two, look how much it decreases to five mils per kilogram per minute. If you go to three or four, it's now down about as low as it's gonna be at two milliliters per kilogram per minute. And as you can see, the enzyme systems are 2D6 and 3A4. And right here I said, of course, since it's a high E, clearance is dependent upon Q, which you already knew. This makes some active metabolites as well. Um, anytime you have hepatic clearance, there's going to be metabolites, aren't there? And there's two important metabolites for you to be each, at least be able to uh, recognize, MEGX and GEX. Um, MEGX is, has similar activity to the parent drug, so it's active in the same way as the parent drug and does the same things and it's hepatically cleared. So the same kinds of things that will happen to lidocaine is what's happened to your MEGX. The other metabolite has no antiarrhythmic activity. It's cleared about half and half by the liver and the kidneys and has some side effects like headache and CNS impairment. So this one you got to be a little bit careful of, especially in renal impairments, which, or I, which you wouldn't think you need to worry about in lidocaine. You might accumulate this metabolite and get some CNS problems. Another important thing about lidocaine is most drugs have two compartments, but the two compartments aren't really important enough that you should worry about them, but in lidocaine it is. Remember, two compartments means that the drug will initially distribute into the first compartment and then over time distribute into that second compartment. And so you'd have a bigger volume distribution eventually than you would originally. And then when the drug is removed, it's going to be removed. It has to move from the second compartment into the first compartment. So originally you're going to have a quick drop off and then there'll be a slow leaching out from this second compartment. So you can see here we have two different volumes, one for each department, so compartment, so <laughs> department, oh my goodness. Um, the first volume will be about 0.5 liters per kilogram. The second volume of distribution would be about one and a half liters per column for the second compartment. 
So you can see they're quite different. And there's different numbers depending on what disease state you're dealing with as well. The half-life um, for the first compartment is about eight minutes, so it moves quickly from that first compartment, only eight minute half-life. And the, for the second compartment, it's 100 minutes or 300 minutes if it's a cirrhosis patient. So what you're seeing here then is we usually base the half-life and when we're trying to make decisions about steady state, et cetera, on that final half-life. So we're gonna be working with about an hour and a half or so for a half-life. So this drug is removed quickly. And as you might expect, when you see, you know, the, ha the volumes are on the small side, aren't they here? And that makes sense for the shorter half-life. And it's cleared very quickly. We know it's a high extraction drug, so it's cleared very quickly, which adds up to a small, which adds up to a short half-life, right? Eight, eight minutes and an hour and a half. The initial volume distribution, so if you're trying to give a loading dose, which we often do for this drug, you're going to use a half a liter per kilogram to load the patient because you want to base that on not the eventual volume but the initial volume if you're giving a, giving a bolus. So you're going to use these numbers here for that first compartment. Um, fraction unbound. Um, <clears throat> the binding is kind of is very, is quite variable. I was going to say very variable, which is sort of silly, I guess, but it's quite variable um, and not usually a factor. But it is highly bound to AEG, or I should say it's bound to AEG when it is bound. So if there are changes in AEG, you could see some effects. Half-life, as we mentioned, is about 100 minutes, so an hour and a half to two hours. Obviously, it's going to be longer if you have cirrhotic disease. Bioavailability, very low. Why? It's a first pass drug, right? Most of the drug is removed in that first pass, which is why we don't give this drug by mouth or by any first pass route of administration, route of administration, if you're trying to get systemic effects, because it just won't, you, you, can, you can't give, well, you could give enough, but you'd probably cause so much stomach upset that you have to give this drug IV if you want systemic effects. That's why you, you can give lidocaine orally and it doesn't, you don't get any systemic effects. It's just going to have a local effect. Or you can use different lidocaine type preparations on your skin and not have a systemic effect. Therapeutic range is one to five and oh, I forgot to put the units on there. Bad, bad girl. It's milligrams per liter. Adverse effects. You can't, these are the concentration dependent adverse effects. Again, you get CNS excitation, paresthesias, which is, you first usually see it with like tingling around your lips and you can get some in your nose and your t toes. Tinnitus, which I think you guys all know what that is and blurred vision. So there you get some CNS excitation and problems with your CNS system, some excitation. In your cardiovascular system, you're gonna see a decrease in blood pressure bradycardia, and again, it's proarrhythmic because it's an antiarrhythmic. And I believe that's it. And I was right. Okay, so we're going to do some problems in class on this too. So thanks for your attention. We'll see you in class. Bye.